You're back again for our series on launching your course or your high ticket program. I'm Katie and so glad to welcome you into For Your Success today. We have another special guest with us. Um, and this particular lady I met at an event about speaking and getting the word out about our things, which is what we all do when we have something to offer the world. And so today I'm really excited to bring her in and share some of her expertise and her experiences with you in terms of what they've done to to be able to improve their launches of their programs, and you're going to learn a lot. So join with me. Welcome in Dana from DanaAndDavid.com. Dana, we're so excited to have you on the show. Thank you for being here today. Well, thanks, Katie, for having me. It was great to connect again. We uh, have been talking about high ticket launches, course launches. Um, how do we get the word out there? And I think especially as um, the majority of our audience are faith-based, a lot of times we have this sort of sense of false humility, like I'm really good at that because God gave me the talent, but it's wrong for me to tell people about it. And so launching is sort of this, you know, constant struggle between how do I promote what I'm doing, tell people about it without coming across as prideful or gloating or all those other things that we've, you know, we've, we've been taught is wrong for us to do as a believer. How have you guys sort of found the balance in all of that? You know, that is a great question because it is something that I struggled with as well. In fact, we when we first got started, we were totally focusing on the secular side of things and we didn't even, you know, focus on, you know, serving Christians, which is now who we are serving, but it becomes a, it becomes a thing where God has gifted you something. He has gifted you in a way and you're not supposed to keep that to yourself, you know, and if it's going to help the body of Christ in any way, we're we're giving God a disservice if we don't share it. And so when we started to, you know, really dig into what our gifts were and how we could share those with the world and that we were doing it to glorify God, that's the key right there, to glorify God. Instead of glorifying Dana or David, you know, we're, we put ourselves in a whole different place where it became exciting to share and watch how God was going to use it. Yeah, I love that. And we talk about that a lot with our, you know, the Faith Like Flamingos book. If you go back to just a recent episode, 153, where we talked about doing you because you were created for this, right? And it's, it's like, how can you not? If God gave you this gift, and it's to serve other people. It's you're to be the channel of, of what he's doing in this world. How can you not stay quiet about it? And, um, but learning to express that in a way that comes across as service is exactly why we're here today. And so in your launches, tell us about how you serve your people as you're getting ready to give them this offer of helping them build their business and make their lives better. Well, we've, we've always come from the, you know, the, the mindset of giving. In fact, we gave, gave, gave for so many years. It, I think we were coined as the givers, not so much as the takers. And so there was a bit of a switch because a lot of our audience was expecting things for free for us, from us. But all of a sudden we have this high ticket coaching program and course, you know, those aren't the people that were necessarily going to dig in to their pockets, even though they, you know, know, liked and trust us. So we've had to incorporate, you know, a lot of giving in the, in the launch. So we did a series, an email series where we did video trainings that we gave away for free to encourage people to try out the course, you know, just little, little tips and tidbits just to get their appetite really wet. You know, we did that. And, um, other times where we've done other, you know, relaunches, let's say, we've, we have a master class that we've perfected. In fact, that's the, the model we're using right now, where it's a free master class. It's 60 minutes packed with information on what the course will do for them. But it's also, even if they don't buy the course or sign up for our programs, they have a blueprint that they can take away and know exactly what they should be working on in their business. So the course 
and the program gives them the hands-on with us, you know, someone to keep them accountable and to keep them excited about their learning. But certainly the masterclass alone just is a gift. So that's where we're at right now. And of course, email series that get people excited and you always want to speak to the pain points, you know, and, and give them a little bit of the remedy along the way. Certainly once they start to see those sort of results from just the remedies, they want the whole thing. So that's how we've, that's how we do it. What's been one of your biggest struggles as you're launching these things? You, you launch a couple of times a year, right? Right. What's something that, that you guys have had to, to sort of figure out and overcome? Well, David's our tech expert and I can't even begin to know what he has done to do all of that. But I know that at least one of our launches had some serious tech issues where people weren't getting the emails, links weren't working and things like that. So the proverbial tech issues are always going to be there. But we just prayed our way through it, and we knew that God was going to use it in some way. And, um, you know, the same with, with lower turnout that we were expecting. God uses that. The people that were supposed to be on those master classes were there. And that was how was God was glorified in the moment. So it's, it's a matter of staying true and staying prayerful and not trying to just go off in the wrong direction. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, a recent uh, interview with Julie Duffy who trains writers in her programs. And we were talking about that not being perfect, right? Being willing to put it out there even imperfectly and, and get it right. And even, even when you, you cross all your T's and dot all your I's, there's still something unexpected because this is life, right? Exactly. But if we're going to wait until everything is textbook perfect, um, it, it, we're not going to get it out there. We're not, and if we're not getting it out there, we're not serving our people. And so I love that, you know, we just do the best we can and face those giants as they come up. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Just, just show up and be your best. Love it. Love it. What did you guys do before you did the masterclass launches? What made you switch to that sort of live teaching style? Well, like I said, I think we were just using the email launches and those videos and we put it out there and, um, you know, we had some folks sign up, but it wasn't, I didn't feel the, the interaction. I just really love the masterclass, the live masterclass. Now, when we, we started that, our coach was, you know, saying, you know, you really want to get to the place where you got a, a evergreen webinar so that you can do that year round. You don't have to have this huge buildup and it's exhausting and all of the things, but, and that will be great, but I don't know, there's something about a live webinar and, and having the interaction and knowing that somebody's listening and it's, it's like, I guess when you're leading worship, it's, it's been really hard during the pandemic to be doing it from my computer, from my piano right back here, because I can't feel the people. But um, when you know there's folks watching a webinar, that's, that's exciting. Yeah, I love it. And, and it is interesting too, how we've learned to innovate through the different things, right? The, the pressure, the pressure's on and we need to, to do it. And it's funny how the live launches work for some and the pre-recorded work for others. And some of us enjoy the longer, you know, three, four five classes in order to launch things and others do better. No, I do better with a webinar, just one lesson and, and make my offer. Right. And it's, it's so interesting how with different, different ones of us, different giftings, different specialties, different, even different niches, how different things work for different audiences. Um, what would you say is the best thing that you have ever done um, in terms of your launches? What's something that you're like, man, that really went over well. We need to do that every single time. Oh, that's a great question. You should have prepped me on that one. I could have really oh, had a great sorry. answer. No, 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 that's fine. Um, I think it's the feedback questionnaire at the end. I, mm. you know, 
we we get that both from you know attendees that didn't buy you know why didn't they buy um, and we also get that from promoters that people you know partners that we had that were bringing you know their audience to the master class what could we have done better so I think that is that's a piece that a lot of people miss is that follow-up piece and figuring out well how can we make it better and some of the feedback we've gotten has has made a huge difference yeah I love that and it's something that we emphasize in our in our programs in our mastery program and our Queen's mastermind about the mastery about doing it and getting the feedback and evaluating on you know yourself um, whether it's feedback from clients or feedback from the coaches or feedback you know um, just your own self evaluation is how do we make this better and then doing it again right because I know when we started we had course after course after course and we'd put it out there and we'd get a few students and we'd be like well that didn't do what I wanted and we'd move on what else could I do and we'd move on and create something else when we should have been going back and iterating on that first thing and making it better and becoming a master of what we were teaching and now that is what we teach others to do and I love that I love that you pulled that in I don't know if if our our guests up to this point have mentioned that piece of getting the feedback afterwards. Yeah. How did we do? What can we do better? What did you like? What was not helpful? And all of those things. Right. And being in partnership with David, you know, he will have seen things different than I did as well, coming at it from our different perspectives. And so we'll have a, you know, we'll take what they, we've gotten as feedback and our own, and then we'll create a document. And then it's like check mark to, to seriously, not just let it go in one ear and out the other. Right. Right. Well, how do we make this different? What do we want to do differently next time? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. What would you, what would you say is your best piece of advice for someone who's just starting out? Maybe this is their first launch or their second launch. If you could go back and talk to you in your first or second launch, what would be the, the advice you would give? Stay organized. I think you know, there are so many moving pieces to a launch. And if you're doing it yourself, um, then keeping yourself organized is so important. I know that was some piece that I wasn't sure of. You know, our, our coach was encouraging us to, you know, hire someone to help us with the launch and, and all of that. But at the time, the cash flow wasn't there. And so we've kind of you know, pat, pat ourselves on the back a little bit, we've built our whole business doing it ourselves so that we can show people that you can do it. You know, yeah, certainly outsourcing is amazing because then you can scale and you can do all the wonderful things. But, you know, to get a business built by yourself um, does take a lot of organization. And that is probably what I would tell myself. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Those are gems to take away today. Those of you that are listening to the podcast or watching this on, on the video, be sure that you go and check out Dana and the letter N, David, Dana and David.com and be sure and grab their free gift as well that will help you create the perfect lead magnet to lead people into your email list so that you can grow a list and launch your business. So thank you again, Dana, for being with us and for all of your insights. You uh, are so welcome. Launch. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, and I just want to make one little correction. Um, it's David, the letter N, Dana.com. So if oh, I'm I sorry, gave I said that, it backwards. Yeah, they're not going to find us if they go to Dana. You know, I'd like to be the headliner. Yeah, but no, it's <laughs> <laughs> David's my secret weapon. He's my strategy king. We call him Dr. Strategy. But yeah, David, the letter N, Dana.com. Thank you. You're I'm bad. sorry. We no, will get it right problem. in the show notes. Um, check the show notes, guys, for that direct link. And, you know, you might not hurt to buy the other one. <laughs> just in case folks do get it backwards. That's like right. Me. That's true. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for listening. Wherever you are, please scroll down and uh, let us know what you thought of today's episode. We'll see you soon.